Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Today I want to try another new design, this time a variation of a foundational design we've already reviewed this year called Ocean Currents. This design is called Connecting Ocean Currents, and it's basically the exact same idea, exact same design. The only difference is that we are going to hit the inside swirl point of our foundation. It's kind of adding another rule to the design and by that extra little additional rule we're going to come up with an entirely different texture. So let's get on the machine and see how this looks in free motion. So I'm in a hair section of Express Your Love and pretty much I want to just work straight down this area with a nice foundational uh, swirling line. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come on down and basically swirl into an open spiral, work my way back out again, kind of wiggle around a little bit and maybe swirl in a different direction. And it doesn't matter how tight and closed that you make this because we're going to be working back into these spirals many, many different times. So if you want to go on ahead and close them up a little bit, that's fine. If you want to leave them nice and open, that's actually good too. So I'm just going to keep working down this line, just stitching nice open spirals. And you notice how I'm hitting, kind of swing this around a little bit so you can see it. Notice how I'm hitting the edge uh, occasionally. That is just simply going to make it easier in the filling process of this foundational design. These designs uh, really fill through a space completely and they fill using echoes. And it's really nice to be able to break up a long space like this that we're working in right now. This hair section is very, very long and narrow. And it's nice to be able to break this up when it comes time to fill and do all those lines of echo quilting simply because uh, you're going to end up having to do so many passes, so many stitches through that area. Now, you notice that I'm stopping and starting quite a bit. Partly, this is a large space. Partly, it's I want to have the best control over each spir um, spiral as I stitch it. And partly it's that I'm moving so much of the quilt that I can't control. You know, if I'm down up here and I'm trying to stitch down into this section, well, I just really don't have the control that I need. So stopping and starting is very important, uh, even when setting a basic foundation like this. Even when you're halfway through a spiral like that, this is going to be a really big spiral. I need to stop and reposition so I know my hands are in the best location that they can be. To stitch this particular design. Okay, and I think I can fit one more down in here. And I am noticing this particular quilt, I'm using a totally different batting, and it's definitely a lot puffier than my usual batting, and that's definitely changing some of the way that I quilt. Okay, so now that we have our foundation set, it's time to stitch the second part of this design. Basically we're going to travel an echo. Build up the rest of the space by echoing that foundation. Now we just have that one little extra rule and that is to hit the points within each spiral. You want to hit those, make sure that as you're quilting into the area you hit that point or hit a previous line of stitching and then work your way back out again. So let's see how this works. I'm going to travel stitch a bit and come in with my echo. Swing around and hit that point. Now swing around the inside and it's okay if your lines kind of do that you know, inconsistent echoes. That's perfectly fine. This is connecting ocean currents and it's really a very, very uh, dense uh, it's strong texture, so it's perfectly fine if your echoes are not perfect for this. Now this is what I mean by hitting the edges of the space that you're in with your foundation. You see how I basically have this nice little chunk right here which I can fill in repeated passes and then I can move up and fill another little chunk. I don't have the pressure to fill up the whole space uh, and work all the way up the line and that's very, very nice. So I'm going to pretty much just concentrate on this one space 
travel stitch and echo back inside. And this is another one of those designs that's just really, really great practice for echoing. I'm going to hit that point again. And here's a cool thing. You can actually hit that point and bounce around and just echo that same line that you just echoed before. There's no rule here other than echo your foundation. There's no rule that says that you have to echo it exactly the way it was quilted. So, feel some freedom with that. That's perfectly fine. Now, as this starts to lock up and close, I want to be careful to get through here with at least a couple more lines of quilting before it really locks up completely. So, I'm going to make sure to keep on travel stitching. And at this point, I'm going to do one more stitch, even though this is way too narrow for this space, hit that point one more time, and that's just going to add to the thread texture that much more. Then I'm going to start coming in and hitting that little area right there instead. Rather than tr continuing to travel stitch in, I'm just going to hit basically kind of like that little V right there. Travel stitch just a bit. This is definitely one of those textures that is created by building thread, building layers and layers of thread on top of one another until you get the desired effect that you're going for. And with repetitive echoes, it can get kind of boring. This is about the time that I would be turning on some music to listen to simply because it's one of those things where it's just a repetitive movement. You're not really reshifting your hands. More than anything else, it's foot control. It's speed. Uh, keeping my speed under control so when I hit those travel stitching lines, I can immediately slow down or speed up. So at this point, half of that foundation is filled. I filled into this space right here. Now the second step would be to come on the opposite side of the foundation and continue that exact same set of steps. Filling, hitting that point, swirling up and hitting that point. Continuing all the way down the line until the space is entirely filled with connecting ocean currents. So that's it for this video. This is one of those foundational designs that is going to provide one of the most gorgeous effects on the surface of your quilt. I actually stitched this design in a quilt called Flower Bouquet. And the really cool additional thing that I did with it is I used two different colors of thread. How I created this completely organic swirling effect was I used green thread closest to the inside of the quilt, kind of the inner border. And then for the rest of it, I matched thread with the background. I used black thread. It's the exact same design. The only difference is the thread change and that is what created that amazing, swirling, awesome texture. So also consider that foundational designs are a great place to play with multiple colors of thread. Uh, you know, really it's kind of a springboard for ideas. For this particular quilt for Express Your Love, I'm gonna stick with one color of thread. I'm gonna be using silk, Isochord Silky White through this entire uh, panel. On other quilts I might change thread color, but on this one I think I'm just gonna stick with white. Keep it simple. So that's it for this video. My name is Leah Day, and this has been a video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Find many more videos stitching out Express Your Love, including uh, Ocean Currents, the design that today's design was based off of. Find all of that and more at freemotionproject.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.